Viewers, uh, on the occasion of World Heart Day, we are here to have a uh, general discussion. I myself, Dr. Primandan Bhattisadji, in charge of the CCU of Narayana Super Speciality Cardiology Unit. Uh, so I am extremely blessed to be here with uh, Dr. David Rosario, sir. He is a consultant interventional cardiologist uh, of our unit in Narayana Super Speciality Cardiology. Sir, here uh, we are actually here to discuss something which the people are not very aware about. It's complex high risk indicated procedures, also called CHIP. So, if you could just elaborate what it is, sir. This complex high risk indicated procedures, or CHIP as it's known in short form, is something which has actually uh, come recently over the last few years only, mostly in the US and it's now catching up all over the world, including India. So, so angioplasty actually has come a long way, as you know, from 1977 and Amgen's did the first bill in angioplasty. From there, we evolved to stents in the 80s drug eating stents in the, in the uh, 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 early 90s, then we developed a bioresorbable stents which could actually dissolve to newer generation drug eating stents now which have got a resorbable poly polymer with thin struts which are, which are supposed to be more efficacious and safe for the patients. So what we are now finding is with the overall age of the patients increasing and patients living longer, we are getting increasing number of patients who require a procedure but they are high risk. They may be high risk for various conditions, uh, for various indications which we will discuss later. And doing an angioplasty in these high risk procedures, high risk patients is what we call CHIP procedures. Okay, uh, so now that we know sir what is CHIP, so I would now request you to elaborate the criteria of selection of patients who will actually undergo CHIP and uh, how is it actually done? So uh, angioplasty, as it normally is in simple cases, you know, we put a uh, we put a catheter either through the groin or through the wrist. We access the coronary arteries, and we in, we encase the coronary artery with a guiding catheter. We pass a wire down the artery. We open the block with a balloon, and we put a stent and come out. That is how angioplasty is in the simple form. But there are patients who actually require more, and there are patients which are who have a high risk and complex anatomy, which makes the procedure little longer, technically more challenging and may have a slightly higher uh, mortality. So these are called high risk procedures. Essentially what constitutes high risk is there are arteries where which are heavily calcified. So the, the, the stenosis of the block is heavily calcified and these very, very heavily calcified blocks, okay, uh, cal calcified blocks which, which act like cement or concrete make it not amenable to balloon angioplasty. So if you try to open the block with the balloon, either the balloon fails to inflate adequately or it uh, ruptures. Then what happens is if it if that happens, one is not able to deliver the stent or even if the stent is delivered with difficulty, the stent may not expand properly. And there are multiple studies all over the world coming time and again which shows that in every calcified regions if these blocks are not adequately prepared your angioplasty result is suboptimal patient does not do well in the short term in the intermediate and in the long term so heavily calcified lesions is one aspect of this chip procedures the other aspect of the chip procedure is when we do angioplasty of the main artery which is called the left main artery Left main, as you know, is the most important artery, so one has to be very quick and careful because that supplies most of the heart. And doing angioplasty on the left main uh, makes it uh, definitely high risk and complicated. Apart from that, there may be arteries which are totally blocked, which we call chronic occlusions, or we may be doing angioplasty in in a patient who's got a very weak heart. The normal pumping function of the heart is around 55 percent. If you do, if you are attempting to do an angioplasty on a very weak heart then uh, what happens is it's difficult to do, the patient may not be able to tolerate the procedure well. I recently had a patient who was turned down from having an angiogram at a very reputed institution in Calcutta uh, because his heart was weak. Uh, we had done a successful procedure on him just uh, yesterday. Uh, so this is what is. Uh, this is, these are the group of patients who require uh, yeah, elimination from chip process. Also to say, now the question is, then why can't these patients go for surgery? Yeah. Why can't they go for bypass surgery? Yes, that's a good question. They can go for bypass surgery, but because often what happens is their age is, they are at an advanced age, or their pumping function of the heart may be very low, or what happens is that their creatinine, the kidney function may be impaired, and that makes them, or they may have lung disease, or other diseases that makes, that disqualifies them from having a surgical procedure. What we normally do is, uh, what the anesthetists before a surgical procedure, they calculate something called an SDS risk. 
and it typically the STS risk is more than five. If the STS score is more than five, these are high risk, and usually these are turned down by the surgeons and the anesthetists for an open procedure. So, uh, so how how would you expect the mortality to percentage to be, sir? Let's like, suppose bypass versus a chip, if at all. Uh, surgery cannot be done. See, if, if, if a surgery cannot be done, if you have to compare mortality uh, bypass versus, uh, versus uh, chip procedures, I would say the mortality is definitely lower with the, with the chip procedures because it's relatively non invasive uh, you don't open up the chest. And because of additional surgical comorbidities like uh, renal, the renal function is being impaired, left ventricular systolic function, heart being weak or may have the patient have lung disease, that adds on to the mortality. Okay. So the exact, the, the, the exact surgical mortality is definitely high, but what adds on to is are the additional factors that the patient may be having. Okay. So uh, suppose a patient comes in, he is unfit for PTCA, and then he was referred by the bypass team that uh, may not fit for surgery and we do take up the patient and the patient survives the chip procedure also then how do you say the follow-up strategy is it same as we do regularly with PTCA patients yes, or so there are a few things we, 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 have to, we have to consider now oftentimes what happens is we do an angiogram and we find a very tight block like a 90% or 95% block the cardiologist comes out of the cath lab discusses with the relatives that this patient has got a high block, needs to be taken up for angioplasty immediately and it is the relatives give a consent and the angioplasty is done in the same sitting while the patient is still in the cath lab. Now this is not how CHIP is done. Okay. CHIP will never be done this way. In a high, complex highly syndicated uh, procedure, if you have an angiogram which is bad, you cannot do this angioplasty in the same sitting. The patient has to come out of the cath lab, he has to come out of his sedation, he, and then we discuss with the relatives and with the patient what are, uh, what needs to be done, uh, what are the risks involved. We have what is called a heart team approach. The heart team approach typically should consist of, a, of the intervention cardiologist, the cardiac surgeon and a non-interventional medical cardiologist. And of course the patient uh, and his relatives are also part of the team. Very important to have the patient and the relatives in the team. So we discuss the patients from the interventional cardiology point of, point of view, the surgeon discusses his point of view, his uh, pros and cons, his risks, why he wants to do or why he does not want to do. And then after discussing everything, together we make a joint decision with the patient on board that everything put together, you will probably, the patient will probably benefit more from the complex high risk indicated procedure because of its relatively lower mortality than the surgical procedure. Okay. So, Sir, so, suppose such a thing which uh, is not very common to be practiced in our part of the world and uh, it's, it's a new concept that is developing in India. So how do you think this is available in the other centers or how are we equipped in our centers uh, so, to so, undertake this procedure? Yes, so what has happened is that we've been doing quite a lot of high risk procedures in our institution with very good success rate I would say in excess of 90%. Uh, patients with low ejection fraction, low hearts, heavily calcified lesions. Uh, we recently had a patient who had a stent implanted in an outside hospital which had not expanded properly, which was not adequately deployed. Uh, so what we, and the patient was a high risk for surgery mm -hmm. because he has got other problems. He's got a malignancy actually of the eye uh, for which he's been treated at the very reputed uh, Oncology Institute of India. So he came to us, what we did was we did a rotational atherectomy and we cut the previously deployed stent, what we call stent ablation. Uh, which is quite rare in the world and we uh, put a new stent and which was optimally uh, well opposed against the vessel wall. So these are the kind of patients. Sometimes when you do a chip procedure you may actually have to give a support. So what we do is we usually support the heart with an with a, uh, uh, IVP. Uh, there are other support devices which are more expensive and not very freely available in India. Uh, hopefully one day we would uh, love to get a hands on once they become available in India at a reasonable price. So some of these patients will require an IPP for support. Uh, we do not fully sedate the patient usually, but we have the anesthetist on standby. Our anesthetist colleagues give uh, some what we call conscious sedation. That is what is done for some of these patients. For some of these procedures, because they tend to be slightly longer than normal. After the patient, after the procedure is done, the patient comes to a CCU, and then it's very important that the role of Dr. Premanjul, who is a CCU in charge, and the CCU doctors, the CCU nurses is 
very important. It is as important as the intervention card which is as a procedure. Because you may have a great procedure, but there can be a major uh, uh, catastrophe post procedure. So frequent monitoring of the patient, assessing the vital functions. If the patient is, is on a hemodynamic support, making sure that the uh, perfusion of the distal extremities is well taken care of. Uh, looking up at the pulse, blood pressure, oximetries, kidney function is very important. Those things has to be clear. Closely it's, it's a cumulative. It's, it's a, it's a tip. So what I want to say is it, it is a key way, but it is not the work of one person. When we plan the procedure, we have the intervention packages, the cardiothoracic surgeon, the non-interventional medical cardiologist and the patients involved. During the procedure, we have the intervention packages requiring a lot of uh, uh, newer technologies like rotational atherectomy, sometimes uh, cutting balloons, uh, hemodynamic support and, and sometimes imaging also we have to uh, do this sometimes we have to do this procedures with IVAS, intravascular vascular ultrasound or with OCT guidance with our anesthetic support post procedure once the patient comes in meticulous uh, care of the patient has to be taken by the intensive care CCU doctors, nurses and paramedical staff Okay, so viewers, uh, we really had a very elaborate discussion on a very rare topic and it is something which is really coming up big in our part of the world and uh, really are very grateful to Dr. David Rosario sir for sparing his time and uh, letting us know about CHIP and uh, so sir, just before we end our session, I would like you to uh, give us a take home message not regarding CHIP, regarding the entire population and uh, heart diseases on the World Heart Day. So on the equation of World Heart Day, what I would like to say is much as we have made an advance with CHIP and complex procedures, our surgical colleagues also have greatly developed their skills in uh, open heart surgery. But as the adage goes, uh, prevention is better than cure. So it's better to take care of your heart at a younger age when, before the problem starts. We are always there to help you if you have a problem or we would prefer that you do not have a problem. So it's better to be careful before a heart disease comes. Heart disease as we know affects people who have the 4 S, uh, the sedentary lifestyle, people who take a lot of saturated fats, increased sugars and increased salt. So these four and smoking, that's the fifth one. So these are the five S's along with the genetic factors. Genetic factors is something which we don't have control but the others are something that we can surely control. And uh, if these are taken care of at an early age, time and again studies have shown that the incidence of heart disease has come down. In the western world, with, with these things being taken care of, the overall incidence of myocardial infarction or heart attack actually has come down. Uh, so this is something which we need to look into. We know that we Indians are genetically more prone to heart disease than our western or uh, counterparts or counterparts from countries like Japan and China in the sense that Indians tend to get heart disease at least two, one or two decades earlier than our Caucasian counterparts or our Japanese or Korean or Chinese counterparts. So this makes us more prone for some reason and if we can take care of the five S's at least that I have mentioned with intermittent check, uh, check up with a cardiologist, most many of this if not all, a lot of the heart disease can actually be prevented. Okay, so viewers, thank you and wish you a very happy World Day.